What's up guys? Welcome back to Back Road Driver. We're the Miser Brothers. Today we're at our dealer, Ted Russell Ford, here in Knoxville, Tennessee on Parkside Drive. We're actually behind us, you'll see two Broncos, the new big Bronco. We've got an Outer Banks and a Big Bend. We're gonna walk you around those. We've already taken a look at them. We're gonna show you some really neat details that we've come up with. Uh, and then ask your questions in the comments. We'll try to answer as many as we can. Uh, let's go. Get let's go check it. them out. So right here we've got a Big Ben. This is the four cylinder motor. Um, I believe this is also a manual. So, yeah. Yep, this one's a manual. Looks like we've got Velocity Blue on this one. I like this color in person. It's not a rainy day today, so we're actually getting to see these in a little bit better light than we did up at Celebration East. So I'm gonna talk you through some of the neat things, and you've seen a lot of this stuff, but maybe not some of it, because I'm gonna get up close today. This badge is a decal. It's really thick. It actually has depth to it, like four or five times the depth of a sticker. And then on the big bend, these mountains actually have a texture on them. So that's pretty cool. And then I guess some of this is reflective, so that's really neat. Something else I noticed um, in the headlight right here, we've got a Bronco. There's Broncos hidden all over this thing. These lights are really, really cool. Um, this bar covers up Bronco. I don't know that it's going to on this line in its final production run. The bumpers right here, you can see these Bronco bolts. This does come with a tool kit to be able to remove a lot of this stuff with the Bronco itself. But you can take these off and it removes all the way down into here, all the way up here. It still caps off nice, but then it allows you to get this tire up on a rock a lot easier. Um, we'll say a rock was you know this tall right here. You'd be able just to cut up onto that. Um. So this being a big bend, it's going to be kind of comparable to a uh, Jeep Sport. Um, it's not the entry level, but it's not your uh, top of the line either. The big difference with a Bronco between the Jeep was going to be that a Bronco is standard four-wheel drive, whereas the Jeep actually comes in some two-wheel drive models. And um, so that's a big step up to have standard four wheel drive on these. So on the Bronco, different from the Jeep, the mirror doesn't bolt to the door. I think we showed in our Super Celebration East videos, one of those, how the door comes off and how the door goes on. But the mirror is up here. And I want Sam to come in close. It actually says accessory ready. I'm gonna bet you that you could take these two bolts out, get some longer bolts, with whatever accessory and put yourself a pod light or a square light or a KC light right here and not have to tap into the vehicle. Jeep may have something similar to that, but it's pretty cool that that's already thought out. This vehicle is very modular. We'll probably take one of ours apart. If you don't know and your first time on this channel, we have two first editions coming, a two door and a four door. Um, so we're gonna do a lot of cool stuff with them. If you wanna see us jump one, comment, jump it in the comments below. And if we get enough comments, we may set a jump off, off road and, and do something crazy with one of our Broncos. Let's make it interesting. If we get um, 500 comments, jump it down below, then we're gonna jump that thing. And we'll, we're not gonna wait six months to do it after we get it. As soon as we get it, we'll have everything ready. We'll get set up and we'll jump our Bronco. So jump it down in the comments. This is going to be your soft top option and a lot of people change their order to a soft top because they're able to get it a little bit sooner. Um, you can always buy a hard top later. This is a pretty solid soft top. I want to show you how this soft top goes up. This is pretty nice for a soft top. It's not an old uh, raggedy vinyl top that doesn't fit very good if you're kind of thinking about that on an old Jeep you've been in before. Let me show you how this goes up. So it's driver's side. So driver's side, you're gonna hit this, press down on this button, and then everything's gonna kinda come up to here, lock in place. This will come down, snap right here. I mean, it snaps in a few places. Snaps in a few places. And uh, yeah, I mean, You 
can get out of the rain pretty quick in this thing. So this is gonna Velcro back in. I don't even think that they have this sitting out here for us to Velcro back in, but this is gonna Velcro in. Uh, but anybody could raise this top up and down and uh, it's a whole lot nicer than tops I've seen on Jeeps in the past. So back door, your traditional swing open door instead of your tailgate drop down design. Obviously that allows you to get up in here a lot closer to what you're doing. Um, whereas if you got a truck and you drop your tailgate, it's really hard to get in there um, and be able to do things. You do have tie downs everywhere, um, cargo management everywhere. A little bit of storage in here with your jack and your uh, fuel nozzle. You put some extra stuff in there, yeah. It's ready to go. You can flip these seats down and have a huge cargo area and I'll go ahead and do that for you real quick. So I think we gotta hit that button. That flips down. I can probably reach this. Yep. So when you do that, I mean, a lot of cargo area. You could potentially, I wouldn't camp back here, honestly. Like, you couldn't stretch out. There's no possible way, even if you push those up. I mean, maybe put a mattress in here some way, somehow, but I don't know how you camp back here. In our 96 Bronco, you could absolutely take the back seat out and put probably a full-size mattress in there. Uh, but it's a nice place to be. This thing is a great mix between rugged and nice. So Brad showed you what it looks like for him to sit in the front seat and then get in the back and sit as well. So I'm gonna do that for you now. I mean, this is way far back. Where you at there? Any I mean, this would be cross country I could handle this. So I got all kinds of room. Does that right there push down? Does that crank down? That does. Crank that down. That so lowers the seat. You that can get more head. That gives you plenty more. Yeah, that gives so you more. If you crank that down, it's going to cut into knee room back there. But go ahead and get it comfortable. Get down low. Go all the way down with that. Well, if I do that, I would need to come you forward. Can come more. up further. All right. Yeah. Now hop in the back. Well, wow, that gives you a ton of headroom. Yep. Yeah. I could see a small, a shorter stature person wanting to sit higher. Um, That's a I mean seat laid back. And I mean, look at this, guys. I could ride back here for a long, long, long way. If I shut the door, does it get into your knee? No. And actually, uh, I, here's something to, to note. This handle slants in at this angle. And so if it had come on out here, it might have gotten my way. But the way this slants, hand me the camera, Brad. I'll show them. See right here, see right here, uh, this just gets on out of your way to where even if you were quite a bit taller, it would be out of your way as well. But the way I sit, it's not even close to hitting. So we're gonna flip the top back open and then I'm gonna sit in the front row, he'll sit in the back row and kind of see what it feels like open air. Um, got a couple friends that just got a new Jeep and I noticed they had this mechanical sliding section in the middle that opened up the other day that's really convenient for being able to do that when you go down the road but that's on the new jeep sam's got that flipped down so i'm going to jump in the driver's seat holy moly so sam's jumping in the back there what's really cool is there's no bar Man. i mean it's freaking open riding down the road in the mountains or, or out in nature this would be ridiculous I'm gonna show you what it looks like from from a uh, point of view no bar man I mean, it's wide open and it his is. head in the back seat is actually in line or even above the actual outside of the vehicle so he's gonna get a ton of wind in his head I'll tell you this uh, if I'm driving and somebody's sitting in the back they better hold on because I'm gonna bang the head on this maybe <laughs> That's the only thing I could see is somebody taller. Uh, this is in play, but uh, 
that's one of the dangers of riding in the back seat i guess but having the the bar come across the support back here and not be in the middle like in a jeep this feels a whole lot more open than a jeep ever did so on your perspective back here. so back here in the back this is right at my face this is what you would see back here and as you can see i mean if you're wanting to take a look at the scenery as you're going down the road this is the place to be back here wide open so i was sitting back here in the back and i noticed this little easter egg i looked these coordinates up and this is the coordinates to johnson valley california and what that uh what is significant about that is that's where they have the king of the hammers race that's a pretty epic race and that's in this bronco's dna so uh, it's pretty neat that they put that little easter egg up there another little easter egg when you open your gas cap it's obviously capless but sam's gonna tell us you got you got these three little pictures here and uh the codes that is like the uh bill code for the u13 was the roadster the u14 was the half cab pickup and the u15 was the suv version of the original bronco the closer you look at things on this bronco the more little details like that you'll find it's pretty cool okay so we're over here on the outer banks now and this one also has a soft top but it's got the rear window still attached whereas that one doesn't so over on that one you can see you can go fully vertical but over here they've left this piece on so if you get out in the rain or whatever you're not so screwed uh, but you can bring this top back to here or in the seating area you've still got that big open air feel but you're gonna have everything stay dry in the back and you can flip this up in two seconds and and be out of the rain so let's show you how this actually pops up if you wanted to get in the back here pop this lever right here and this will actually raise up and you can support it right here and so if you were at a campsite or something like that you could leave this popped up reach in here grab some gear without having to get into Six it packs up. colas yeah stuff like that cola. and uh so you have access to get in here it's even got a stand so you don't have to hold it up while you're getting something out you can actually prop it up that's a pretty neat touch but you can fold this out of the way shut this down it actually latches right here let me show them you latching it unlatch it and latch it for us so unlatch so, all you got to do is push down pull flip that's it got it the modular hard top is going to give you a lot of functionality too you're going to be able to pop pieces off in the front pop windows off in the back um, a lot of different things can come off of there it's not all going to store in the back of the vehicle they do have the doors down here on this model and on the four door you can take all four doors off and put them in the back of the vehicle and drive down the road it starts raining or you're done out floating for the day it's dark and you're headed back home you can get them out of the back out of their bags put them right back on the vehicle in our video at super celebration east we actually showed you the ford engineers taking those doors off putting those doors on it was josh hamilton he's uh, down in uh, texas right now doing off rodeo with bronco so shout out to josh he was good to us that day um, we're going to look inside just a little bit on this outer banks i want to show you the badge really quick this Outer Banks badge, it has um, a couple different textures on it as well. So there's like a reflective exterior that's like a satin finish. Then there's a little blue line that's a slick finish. And then the inside, this wave right here for Outer Banks is gloss. And then you've got some matte texture in here. It kind of looks like some waves. So the badging, I think they've done a good job. It's not a hard three-dimensional uh, design badge, but I think that's going to stand up over time well i think a lot of people will probably change those out anyway so this outer banks has the 2.7 liter v6 engine whereas the big ben had the 2.3 liter four um, if you didn't know guys ford actually updated the horsepower figures on these uh, here at the <laughs> let me hold this for you man they put those so, up just for us today they did so if you didn't know guys ford updated the horsepower figures on this thing and so i get it right i'm going to read them to you but they updated that number on the 2.3 liter engine to 300 horsepower and 325 foot pound of torque 
and on the 2.7 which is this engine they updated it to 330 horsepower and 415 foot pounds of torque so um, I know you, everybody's having to wait, but at least they bumped the horsepower numbers up for us a little bit in the meantime. Um, this is going to be plenty of power, guys. I've taken a ride in one of these, and it's got plenty of power, trust me. No need for a V8. I just had to step away for a second. Um, he just said there's no need for a V8. I just need a moment. I never thought he'd say that. He's wrong. We could always use a V8. All right, I apologize. It just now hit me what I said. The 2.7 and the 2.3 liter have plenty of power, but could you imagine a Coyote in this thing with a supercharger on it? Now that would be cool. Okay guys, so some of y'all bought an Outer Banks and you're worried that you bought too nice of a Bronco and you're gonna get it scratched up on the trail and everything. You've got your body color mirrors and that sort of thing. You've got your uh, fender flares that are uh, body color and you're worried you're gonna get out on the trail and scratch these up. Well, something we just found is you can pop these off and it's literally Let me show up close. three. I know you flipped them, but let me show one up close. It's a little switch. It's a switch that you just flip and it's done. Like these are Four, gonna get stole. <laughs> five. We're going five, five of those. And check this out, guys. Boom! He's taking a Bronco apart. You put these in the back, and now you can go out on the trail and not have to worry about scratching these up. And once you get done, hold on. I want to see the profile real quick. I want to see the poke. I want to see the poke. <laughs> and now, if we pop this off as well, uh, then you would have the tire outside the vehicle yep. with a lot of clearance. Yep. That's pretty cool. So. Pop one of these back on. Are you already snapping them? Dude. I mean, that's back to uh, bam that fast, and I just tried that for the first time. So that's how easy it is to get those off and on. That's pretty cool. So I'm in the Outer Banks interior. It's the Navy Pier. So you got a combination of navy, gray. Uh, there's a little black in here. This is the automatic model. Um, this is what will be in my wife's four door first edition and then we'll have black in my two-door first edition there are some switches up here because this does have a little bit more equipment these are waterproof as we've mentioned in another video so even if it was to rain in here you're not going to short these out you've also got your auxiliary switches if you've got the higher model with more off-road capability like badlands or first edition you're going to have more switches here that do more things this is where the trail turn assist was um, you've already got everybody knows this but you've already got six pre-wired in auxiliary switches and this wires run to different parts of the vehicle so you'll be able to do about anything you want another cool thing this little attachment point here you're going to be able to screw down a cage that comes across like a rail and then be able to attach a gopro a gps because your cell phone if your cell phone doesn't work out in the woods cb cb you don't have a gps if you're Yep. So when you put an actual Garmin GPS or TomTom Tom up here where a cell phone wouldn't work, that will actually work. And then they did put power up here, which I think is genius, both USB-C and USB. So you'll be able to actually power your device up here instead of having to run the cable back down the power down this way. Screen's awesome. I think if you're interested in seeing more about the screen, we won't go into it in this video, but in our super celebration east videos we'll put a link in the description we show you how this screen works when you're off-roading to be able to see what's down in front and what's on the sides of the vehicle while you're actually off-roading it's about a 30 minute trail ride video in the smoky mountains steering wheels plush it's navy in the middle i mean this is a super upscale vehicle man if you're coming from a jeep you're going to be used to this that the uh, window uh, controls are in the middle that's uh, because the doors come off and that's where they moved the switches to so they have a home. Um, Let's show them the door connectors. We showed this yeah. actually plugging in and off. So on the video, one of the videos at Supercell, we showed how easy this port is to be able to plug and unplug the power accessories in the door. Um, once the plug goes in, this door actually closes on the back side of the plug and catches. So it's it's got some catch right there. So it's set up for that and then two bolts and you've got the door off. I think it's probably a two person job. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be able to do it one person. Um, the fact that you can put those in the back of the Bronco 
and drive with them means you don't have to go back and get them. If you've got a Jeep and you do a lot of off-roading and you want your doors off, you take them off, you got to take a plastic coated cable and strap them to a tree somewhere, lock them up, and then go back by that point at some point. If you're going out and back on a trail, it's not that terribly big of a deal, but it's not as good as putting them in the back of your Bronco and running down the road, so plus one for Broncos. With the doors off, you can really see how modular all the body panels on the Bronco are. I mean, if you dented this in, it's a couple bolts and I bet you, you could have this panel off in a couple minutes and you could get one of these painted and put back on. So, I mean, it's this is going to be a platform that is super customizable in the future. I know people are going to come up with different panels that have accessories in because there's there's room to put something in here i'm sure that somebody will come up with some um, panel with a door on it where you lift some lockable storage in there or something like that so it's going to be cool to see all the accessories that become available for this bronco it's super customizable and sky's the limit for this platform so let's see if we can one pull this last time we're going to see this we got oxford white cactus gray Iconic Silver, Area 51, a lot of people love that one. You've got Carbonized Gray, you've got uh -oh. Cyber uh, Orange, Cyber Orange, Race Red, Rapid Red, Rapid Red Velocity Blue, Lightning Blue, which is on our first edition. You've got antimatter blue, which this is a very cool guy, color, guys. I would just hate to have to keep it clean. And then you've got shadow black, which I would hate to keep clean as well. But dark colors are going to be awesome. Um, man, this is quite the lineup for this year. You don't see a green, and I know a lot of you guys are holding out for 22 to get that green. Really curious to see what that ends up being. Uh, but these are the colors for the 2021 Bronco. So if it's your first time on our channel, this is Sam's 21 F-150. It's got probably eight or $9,000 worth of mods so far. We've also got some Shelby Mustangs, 2020s, a 96 Bronco. We've got two of these first editions coming. So we've got a ton of things going on on this channel. My supercharged F-150 is about to start in its racing uh, videos. It's gonna be exciting, guys. It's a lot of power. It's a lot of fun. We're gonna surprise a lot of people in muscle cars. Um, if you've not subscribed to our channel yet, please do so and comment I subscribe down below because Sam and I like to personally come and thank everyone who subscribes to our channel. Make sure that you put jump it in the comments if you want to see us jump our brand new Bronco. And I mean, like we're going to get A take delivery jump. of it and we're going to go jump the thing. Our so. uh, little brother, Charlie, owns a mini excavator. And we're not talking about some little $20,000 piece of equipment. It's a balling piece of equipment and we're going to dig a hole and we're going to build some ramps and we're going to do some crazy stuff. So comment down below, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace.